Hey everybody, Melissa here. So if you use tables and filters in Excel, then you already know that is a very powerful combination for your data analysis. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a tool called Slicers that's gonna make that process a whole lot quicker and easier. I can't wait to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have annual sales data for Mel's Fruit Company for 2023. Now this is in a table, so what we're normally used to doing is filtering our data by selecting our arrow and then deciding what we want to sort by, telling it OK, and it will sort the data. Now with a cell selected within the table, to insert our slicer, we want to go to Insert, Slicer, and this box will pop up that contains all of our column headers. So we need to decide what we want to be able to filter by to put those in our slicer. So I'm constantly filtering by location, customer name, and item description. So I'm going to select those three and tell it OK. Now these three boxes that pop up, these are our slicers. So I'm going to go ahead and move them to the right over here so we can see them and mess with them. And now we have the ability to customize our slicers. If we select one of them and right click, we have a menu that pops up with different functions we can do. But I prefer to do these from my slicer tab. Now one quick note is whatever you do with one slicer doesn't change the other one. So these slicers can look completely different from each other. So up on our slicer tab, we have the ability to change the name of our slicer. So this one is called location and then customer name and item description. Now I don't generally change these because whatever I name, my column is what I want my slicer to be named, but you do have the ability to do that. Now slicer settings, again, you can change the name in here, the caption. I don't generally change anything in here. I let this default because there's just nothing in here that's going to affect my slicer. So I just leave these alone. Now we have the ability to change the style of our slicers. I can make location orange. I can make customer name yellow, and I can make item description green. But I tend to keep mine blue, which is what it defaults to because it's easier for me to read. But you have a bunch of different options out here. Now we have bring forward and send backwards. And you would think about that like a picture and it's kind of the same thing. Let's just say location is behind customer name for whatever reason. I can actually say bring forward and it's gonna put location on top of customer name. We can align the slicer, we can snap it to a grid, snap it to a shape. But the one that you're gonna use the most because it's the one I use the most is probably going to be this area here. So I'm gonna move our item description and put our customer name down here for just a minute. So with our customer name, we have to scroll. Well, we can expand this down to show the rest of our customer names, but we also have the option to tell this, let's say we want it to be three columns. And then if we expand it out, we now have all of our customer names within three columns and we can easily see them all. We can change the height, the width of the buttons, each button, and then we can also change the size of the slicer itself. If we click on our arrow here to expand it, this also gives us more things that we can change. Our position and layout, we can tell it exactly where we want it within our spreadsheet. We have our size and then in our properties. Now the properties I do not mess with because the defaults work just fine for me, but don't be afraid to play around with it, see what it does and make it work for you. Now let's look at the functionality of our slicers. So we have the ability to tell it we just want to see Asia and it's going to bring up everything for Asia, the different fruits they've sold, the customers, the total quantity and the amount. Now, if you notice on our customer name, when we selected Asia, we only have three stores that we can choose from. Everything else is grayed out. That's because it knows the only stores we have in Asia that are our customers is Save-A-Lot, Trader Joe's and Walmart. Now let's just say we want to see Walmart. If we look at our item description, it then says, hey, for Walmart, they've only sold apples, grapes, peaches, and pineapples. They haven't sold any pears or watermelons. 
So I'm going to tell it we want to see apples. And the Walmart in Asia has sold 230 apples at $1,390. Now to clear all of our filters to get our table back to where it was, we can go up to the right, clear filter, clear filter, and clear filter. And now everything is back in our table. Now let's say I want to select multiple countries. So I've got Asia selected. I'm going to do my multi-select here and I'm going to pick Asia and the U.S. and let's say Italy. And now it's going to give me all of my customers and my item descriptions. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I kind of don't want to see Italy. If I click on it again, it goes ahead and removes it. If I want to see multiple customers, let's just say I want to see Kroger and I want to see Trader Joe's. So that's all it's going to put in there. And I go down to my item description and I want to see watermelon. Now it's going to show me Asia and the USA, Kroger, Trader Joe's, the watermelon they've sold, the quantity and the amount. Now let's look at how to use slicers within a pivot table. To insert our pivot table, we're going to go to insert and pivot table, and I'm going to let this default. Now when we come over to design our pivot table, I'm not going to put anything in the filters because my slicers are going to be my filters. So I want my customer name, my location, and my item description. Now these are in the wrong order for me, so I'm going to take my location and put it above my customer name. Now for my values, I want my quantity and my amount. Now my pivot table is set up. To insert my slicers from Pivot Table Analyze, I want to go to Insert Slicer, and I want to tell it location, customer name, and item description, and I'm going to tell it OK. And we have the same three boxes, location, customer name, item description, and the functionality as far as customizing the slicer is the same. I'm going to move my item description down here. Move this over just a little bit, and I'm actually going to make this three columns because I have a little bit more room over here, and I'm going to spread them out and then put my item description there. Maybe make this a little smaller and move that up. Now the functionality is the same within your pivot table. You can tell it Asia, you can tell it save a lot, and you can tell it grapes, and it's just going to pull in your pivot table that data. We can clear all of our data. We can tell it Asia and Walmart. And then we can say we want to see apples and it'll give us that information. We can go back and say, you know what? I want to see grapes as well. So if we click on multi-select, we can add our grapes and it updates the pivot table. Now let's say we want to add another customer name as well. We can go up to our customer name, do multi-select and tell it Trader Joe's. And it's going to add the information for Trader Joe's as well. Now let's see what happens when we add a new row of data within our data set. So we've entered a new row of data for Asia. There's a new invoice and Trader Joe's has sold 500 Kiwis for $3,000. So let's go back to our pivot table and slicers. If we go to pivot table analyze and we tell it to refresh, you can see in our item description, we now have Kiwi. And over in our pivot table, we also have our Kiwi of 500 for $3,000. So now if we go to Asia, we go to Trader Joe's, we can select Kiwi and it'll show us the Kiwi. So slicers within a pivot table are dynamic and will show any changes that are put into a data set and updated within our pivot table. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.